Today's episode of the BS Podcast with Key and Peel is brought to you by SeatGeek, our presenting sponsor and the only fan-friendly app for buying and selling tickets for sports and music. You might have noticed other sites have gone back to the same old tactic of showing you a lower price and then charging huge fees at checkout. But at SeatGeek, the price you see is always the price you pay. Drop your old site and experience buying and selling tickets the way it should be to start using SeatGeek. Download the free SeatGeek app or go to SeatGeek.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by UntuckIt.com. They make shirts that are specifically designed to be worn untucked. It's the only choice for the untucked man. Visit UntuckIt.com and learn why GQ called them perfection. You can even use the promo code BS15 for 15% off all of your purchases. That's UntuckIt.com, promo code BS. And three other house cleaning things I want to mention before we get to Key and Peel. First, the second episode of After the Throne starts streaming on HBO Now at midnight PT on Sunday night. So that's two hours after the West Coast version of Game of Thrones finishes airing. And then it reruns on HBO, the actual HBO, at, uh, at about one o'clock AM on uh, the following night. Second, don't forget to subscribe to The Ringer's new newsletter at theringer.com. We've also been posting additional Game of Thrones content and NBA playoffs content on our Facebook page. Um, check that out, facebook.com slash ringer. Some good stuff on there. And third, last but not least, we have a title and a date for my new HBO show. It's called Any Given Wednesday with Bill Simmons, and it premieres June 22nd on HBO. One more time, Any Given Wednesday with Bill Simmons, June 22nd, 10 p.m. Wednesday, because that's in the title, so it has to be Wednesday, uh, and it's going to be on HBO. That is right after the NBA Finals ends and right before the NBA draft, so I think it's a pretty safe bet. We'll be talking a little NBA in that first show. Uh, very, very excited. There's been a lot of work and a lot of blood, sweat, and tears going into this thing. We're excited to finally uh, have something to show you and to officially really be part of HBO. So I'm looking forward to that. And now, without further ado, Key and Peel, let's roll. Yeah. Clear enough for you. All right. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is, this is exciting. All right. Key and Michael Key. How you Jordan Peel. Hey, Bill. How are you? We're doing great, Good, man. man. Great, great to see you. Us. Great to see you. Great to finally, yeah. I spent last night, at least part of last night, in the bathtub watching your movie on my iPad. No, wow. So does then that I was like, this feel... is weird, so I got out of the bathtub. I you got to get out of bed. I was going to yeah. say, does that make you feel alive, though, watching it in the bathtub? Going, yeah. At any point in time, I could drop this in here and either electrocute myself or completely ruin this piece of this expensive <laughs> piece of way. equipment. Either There's either a fear not. factor to it. Yeah, it was good. No, it's it's. I had no idea what to expect. I intentionally tried not to read anything oh right. cool and so you saw it green initially it was like keanu and, and when i when i first heard about it i'm sure a lot of people told you guys this i was thinking like keanu reeves like are they yeah, what's going what's on gonna, yeah, and then it's like now there's a cat i'm like yeah all right i'm staying out i just want to be surprised yeah, what we which like is the right is way to watch it. we like to piggyback on the name of a bigger star <laughs> smart jump stand on his shoulders get everyone's attention <laughs> then hit him right. with the kitten then lastly what do you say and Key and Peele are in it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you heard from Keanu Reeves about this? Has he said anything? Has he mentioned we, anything? We have, we have, we yeah. have. What did he say? The, well, there, there. It, he, first, he 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 loved the trailer. He loved the trailer. Yep, he loved the trailer. And then uh, I believe he said, he, he these said, guys are wacky. Oh, these guys are wacky. <laughs> yeah. So and so <laughs> that's what he said. Wacky. And he goes, these guys are very good and they're totally wacky. And they're just whacked yeah, out. Yeah. yeah. And he kept on saying, which is not a word I would ever expect to hear come out of Keanu Reeves' mouth. Yeah. So I I take it as a real compliment yeah, that, he, I mean, that, that must... he said we were wacky. That was the word he used. It's got to be. Yeah. I, I, I'm I, debating how much we should. I don't want to spoil too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I will say this well, movie was a tiny bit on John Wick's corner. You know, it's. I, yeah. I, somebody mm -hmm. who's watched John Wick maybe Me I don't too. know twenty seven times I think I've on seen HBO. John Wick maybe twenty six times. Is yeah, there yeah. a more rewatchable? It's, it's just a, a lot of super murders. rewatchable movie. Rewatchable movie. <laughs> Anytime Lance Reddick appears in the movie, I go, "Oh, here we go. Here's another Lance Reddick part." I I, I don't know what it is about that movie, but it's Mr. got Wick. super yeah. rewatchability to it. Yeah. yeah, but this this movie was uh, no joke. Had had nothing to do with John Wick and its and its uh, conception. No, no we, you were like we, years ago. We wrote the script when John Wick came out. 
I was like, I was like trying to get my lawyers involved. I was like, where, who <laughs> let my idea leak? Somebody took the comedy out of my idea. Yeah. And uh, made a, an awesome action movie out of it. And they beat me to the punch. Um, but uh, no, it turns out it's this happy accident. And I kind of wish it w the movie was a, p a parody off of that. Because I feel like that's actually a cooler story. Hey, I mean, it's about as early of a parody as you could possibly yeah, do. Really, I mean, <laughs> I'm still digesting John Wick. Yeah, we'd be yeah. bending time to make that parody. Yeah, yeah. it was like a, a precog parody. <laughs> he went pre. He said it. I love it. But it's a precog. <laughs> so yeah, this must be an insane like ten days for you guys because, I mean, your show was so popular. But you know, when your TV, your cable, YouTube yeah. views, all that yeah. stuff, you can kind of gauge all that stuff. But when you put a movie out into the world, it's just totally different. It's a different process. Mm -hmm. You're just being judged solely by Rotten Tomato scores and grosses mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. first opening weekend, all, all stuff that's pretty foreign, I would guess, right? It, yeah, there's a real weird, there's a, a not weird, but a strange feeling of uh, with our show, I felt that for the most part, it was a lot big show, little business because Comedy Central left us alone. And with movies, it's definitely little show, big business, that, that you get all the metrics and you get all the uh, diagnostics and, you, and, and, and you're getting all these vital statistics. And you kind of go, I, I, I don't really even know what to make of them. Yeah. But the, the tour has been good. But even yeah. on the tour, you're in isolated cities. I mean, we've been in, I think, uh, six cities in 10 days. And, um, and you're seeing the support, mm -hmm. but it, there's no possible way for you to see millions of people at the same time and go, oh, that's all the fans that are going to, and then of those people who are going to go pay for the ticket and all that kind of stuff. It's, yeah, yeah it's, it's a little overwhelming. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and how different it is. I mean, the, I think we, we kind of feel like we already won in that. We got to make a movie we wanted to make, yeah. And, and we like this movie, and we, yeah. we, we you stand got somebody by. to pay for your movie. Somebody pay for our movie, and we love it. And so, you know, there's an element of like, if I, I think it'll, I think it'll do great. But even if it takes people a while to find it, um, you know, like, uh, and, and it becomes a more of a, a cult uh, hit or success. I mean, that uh, either road, I think, is is uh, is a win, and. Uh, but I think the, the vibe we're getting is people are yeah. going to come out. Yeah, and, and I think, think you're going to be fine. Yeah, I mean, I, and I hear what you're saying, Jordan. Like, if it's if 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 a few select people, and I've heard other artists say this, if a few select people who you respect deeply find the the work that you did beloved, that can be a big thing, you, you know. And you can go whatever, wherever, however the success lies. But from what we've experienced. I feel like it could be a great. This could work out to be a great word of mouth project. So that people will go, oh, no, you've got to see it. It's not what you think it is. Mm -hmm. And then there's somebody else goes, oh, no, I saw it. You'll never believe it. It was right. this, and I thought it was that, and it was better. That's, you know, that's your hope. But if it happens organically, that would be nice to know. Yeah. That it, you know. I mean, what, what sucks, it sucks when you make something that you don't, you don't like. And, uh, you know, watching, watching something like that. Uh, is painful in success or failure. So the, Do you have an example? Like, is there something well, that you look back now and you're like, God, you know, there's always a sketch that didn't turn out right here or there. I mean, this is our first movie. So, yeah, yeah. this is this is all new. But yeah. there's all you no, know. I meant I meant more like with this, like some sketch you guys. Just yeah. Like, oh, God, right, yeah. Oh, man, mm -hmm. we blew that. Um, yeah. I mean, there it, it's, it's hard to remember. You literally like if a sketch, if you don't like a sketch, you, you bury it in the deepest recesses of your mind. Pretend like me, like happen. with a bad column or something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Why, did, why did I write that? Yeah. Why did, was I pandering? Yeah. It doesn't even exist anymore. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, the, it's, you know, sketch is so weird and tricky. You can predict it to a certain point, and then there's something that you, you felt easy to us that will, will take off enormously, and something that felt, feels extremely difficult that. You know, for whatever it just won't resonate. Right, like you, you could put you can put your everything into it, mm -hmm. and 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 say, we, we, you know, this was meticulous and it was edited perfectly, and everything went the way we wanted it to go, and then it just yeah, it just duds, and you're going, huh? Mm -hmm. And then we've had sketches where on set, Bill, we didn't know the ending of the sketch, we just kind of meandered, and then the editor puts it together. And it's like it was magic. And, and, and you would never know because when you're watching it as the viewer, you're going, that's brilliant. 
look at these choices they made. And we're just going, oh, whew. You know, it, it's, yeah. it, it's, it's, it, it's not a science. It's, there's just no, there's craft, but it's not a science. But for you guys do, like with sketches, it's almost more fun for you guys. If something doesn't work, you learn from it and you apply it to the next thing and figure out and you're taking chances. You know, your batting average is going to be a thousand. But yeah, with a movie, right. you can't do that. Right, right. That's your right. Movie, you, your you movie, you actually have to get on base it, in the movie. Exactly, right. and then and then so that's striking the balance of finding the finding everything that you want personally to be in the project, and have that somehow meet commerce. It's a, it, that's an art in and of itself. Right, and and, and um, yeah. right, so you take three years. You said, is the three years because you didn't feel like you could get this movie funded, or you needed to reach a certain level of success and fame to get it funded, or it just took three years? Uh, it was the it was the second one. Yeah, we we wrote the script and we we wrote it knowing we were going to write our favorite movie here, uh, that the, our favorite movie that doesn't exist. And we also knew we had you know Kim Peel. At some point, there's going to be someone's going to get life. hip to the idea yeah. of Kim Peel should do a movie. Yeah. So um, we had a script. We had our favorite script ready uh, when uh, New Line came around, and then they you know they loved it and. It was. It just all. It all fell into place. There was. No, there was never a point where this was a, a, a sort of tr a real tr trial. We had to put this up against right. uh, up against the fire or go through any process. We really it found its home very organically. So you start out with the idea, and then you have to write the movie. Like, what were like? Did you have two, three things? You're like, all right, we're doing a movie. Here, let's start with these three things. We'll go from there. Mm. I mean, the thing, the thing was, you know, and, and the, the script was a pen by myself and this guy, Alex Rubens, who's a, a Key and Peele writer. Okay. And we, very early on, we were like, okay, we know we want to make a movie, write a movie for Keegan and I. Um, to, you know, an old, you know, Keegan, Alex and I are huge fans of uh, a type of uh, action comedy we don't see made as much anymore. It's the kind I grew up with, right? It's the like kind of the, yeah, we're all of an age. Midnight Runs in my top it's 10. My, it's, it's a little yeah, bit in my top run. 5. Yeah, yeah. Run, yeah. A little right. bit prior and Wilder and yeah. Prior and Wilder. These are and these are the things that we we talk about. So we knew we wanted to make uh, something that was you know very key and peel. So we said, "All right, what if we put key and peel characters very close to ourselves in um, uh, the the genre of a movie from the late '80s, early '90s, yeah. your, your New Jack Cities, uh, you know your sp Speed, you, 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 you yeah. know movies like that, but movies that have that sensibility of, you know, if you think of a movie like Speed, Dennis Hopper, in the most delicious way, is chewing up the scenery, yeah, and you get laughs organically from the way he's playing the character. And you might even be able to read that script, and there's not necessarily laugh lines in it. It's not a Mel Brooks film, but there's 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 or a movie like The Last Boy Scout, which is commenting on movies like that that have catchphrases. And nobody in them. got it. Everyone was like too serious in 1990, 91. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Last Boy Scout was a better movie than I think we realized when it happened. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Everyone yeah, was yeah. like, "What is this? Yeah. Is it, yeah. Yeah. No, it's a classic." Because they were making that they they were winking in the best way, but yeah. but once again, the bullets are real. Yeah. And the violence is real. And the people are really getting hurt. It's not like it's not like Stroker Ace. It's not a Burt Reynolds movie, mm -hmm. you know, where the punch is kind of like guys just recover and everyone's throwing each other around. It's it's not that schlocky thing that happened in the late seventies. Yeah. It, it, it was it was a reaction to that late seventies to late eighties thing, where you kind of said let's make the let's make a movie like 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 um, like Bad Boys. Bad Boys is a movie and tracking shots and jibs, but it's still hysterical. It's a you great know? movie. Yeah. And you're movie. right. Speed is now a comedy. Oh, yeah. Speed, oh, yeah. 20 or 22 years later, yeah. Speed is now But then look a at like, look at 40, 48 Hours is an action movie. Yeah. Right. Marty Brest happened to to cast this comedic genius name, named uh, Eddie, Eddie Murphy, Murphy, to play Reggie Hammond. Who they almost fired. Who they almost fired. <laughs> and, that <laughs> Two days right. in. and that movie is, not, and like Nick Nolte is hilarious in that movie. Jack Cates. Jack Cates. Mm -hmm. But there's no jokes. They're just hilarious, you know, and so there's this this wonderful tonal balance between comedy and action. That's my favorite movie of all time, and every year it 
I feel a little more guilty about it because it's like ridiculously racist. And I'm oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I thought Jack Cates was funny. And then now I watch them like, Jesus, right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the jungle this bunny. Terrible. Right. <laughs> All yeah. these terrible words. But watched, he's great at it though. I watched, I was flying on a plane because we've been flying so much recently. And I, the other night, the other morning before I uh, took a little snooze on the plane, I watched 16 Candles. Yeah. And something one of our writers had said a couple of years ago, I'd forgotten what Colton had said. It's very human. It's just that there's certain things that have changed in the society. Like the, the movie stands up. The movie stands up as a kind of a teenage romp or a teenage comedy. I do like, feel like 48 Hours is kind of a reaction to a little bit of the prior Wilder movies. Uh huh. Merged with the cop movie. And then 48 Hours ends up influencing 10 years of movies, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Lethal Weapon is basically, I, there are all these different movies that came out of that. Yeah, but what you guys did it, 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 I, one movie that brought back a little of that and, and it's weird because it was four people in two but I thought The Hangover had some of that mm -hmm. where it's like normal people just dressed in a situation where it just goes horribly oh, wrong which, without giving up too much of Keanu that's basically, that's basically the movie yeah. is it starts out normal real people in a heightened situation yeah because yeah. Yeah. I thought like about 10 minutes in, I'm like is this going to be a parody on people who love their pets too much right I ah, had, interesting. i was like oh this is good this is a whole commentary just making fun of all these crazy weirdos who talk to their dogs and kiss their dogs mm -hmm. in the mouth and and in some ways it is you know it there's is. like you know we we, we like to <laughs> yeah. make we, yeah. we like to hit a bunch of uh well you of, hit but you hit way more my point is at 10 minutes i was like and then I was like, oh, oh, it's oh, it's this. This. oh, it's this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, and there, and then, but the other thing that's interesting in the movie, I think in the beginning, is that Alex and Jordan have infused so much heart into the movie. It all hangs yeah. on Keanu. And, and so you're watching a guy who's in a lot of distress and you're watching another guy who's trying to work through something just like anybody. Yeah. Just like anybody. And and I think that stuff stays intact throughout the movie, which I, I don't know if I've said this to you, but I just think is done with, it, it, it's done with Jordan so deftly, how you guys have managed to just work it through so that the humanity never goes away. Even when some of the behavior is weird or uncharacteristic of a, of a person maybe you know, it never, the humanity never goes away right. from the story, ever, ever, ever. And you hang it all, you hang it on this kitten. And it's really... It's it's just really well done. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, yeah. It, it's like it's crazy. It turns out that the the hardest thing to do with with writing a movie is keeping the uh, the drive of the audience, keeping the 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 audience uh, b believing that the characters would do this thing, would put themselves through this, believing uh, believing the motivation of the characters. So yeah, that was that was uh, that was a tricky. It's a it's a tricky tightrope walk because but you cracked the nut, man. All right, that's the cool. Thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I I feel it too. Yeah, because so, as an actor, it's, it was it was it was something you could play with relish. You so know? How, how like when do you get involved when they're working on the script and they're like slaving away in some office somewhere? Do you come in like to, are they sending you segments? Or are you just out and then you come in late? How does that work? Your partnership fascinates me. Well, yeah, we. I mean, I we were working on other things. I was acting in films and yeah. I would come, you know, I would leave during a hiatus and come back for work. And then one day Jordan asked me, you know, he said, look, Alex and I've been working on this thing. Like he said, it was spec. It was just a project, you know, it was a project that they were working on together. Right. And, and he asked me, can we do this table read? And so we did the table read. And, um, after that it was, um, I mean, I guess I would say I was relatively hands off. I, 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 I have so I have a deep, deep, deep respect for his mind, and so I know when he needs something from me, he comes to me. Otherwise, he's an I mean, he especially him and Alex working together, they're like a a, a power duo. They're like yeah. force multipliers to each other. So, it, it, uh, like a nuclear reactor, you know, for ideas. So, I just knew. If you, when it's time for, what do you call it? The razzmatazz? <laughs> when it's right. time for the razzmatazz, then I'm gonna call Keegan for, for whatever this thing I need here. Because also I come to every project, every project as a performer. Yeah. My degree is in performance and, and, and that's what I've always studied. I study performance and work at performance and see how an audience is reacting to performance or a viewer. And so I feel like that's where, if Jordan feels he needs that insight, he'll come to me. And um, now in certain aspects, like when we wrote, when we were writing the sketches, some sketches would just flow from us 
organically. Yeah. You know, there's an idea and we just start using all of our improv tools. So you guys are all spitballing with writers. Somebody throws out an idea, you go, and then do you guys go off together? Or do you go off separately? That when you were writing that stuff, how did it, it work? It happens in all, all different ways. Yeah. It's, it's all, all sketch specific. Sometimes uh, a writer will have an idea and, and we'll say, yes, we love that. Go write that. Um, sometimes I'll have an idea uh, or Keegan will have an idea and we assign it to a writer. Sometimes I'll just write it myself. Sometimes we'll write it T together. together. It's, it's, it's all over the place. Sometimes it's a group of people have to write a sketch together. Yeah. Um, but it was very, you know, we, it's, it's it was extremely collaborative. There were many sketches that every everybody got their hands on in some way. Yeah, a bunch of different paths to the same place. Mm -hmm. Like, all right, so take, I don't know, Black Eyes. So you guys, like, take me from the beginning of that to when it becomes ready to go. Black Eyes, I believe, was the brainchild of this guy, Rich Tallarico. Okay. Um, had the nugget for the idea, um, which, which was just, you know, the the yeah, the, the, right the, 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 mm -hmm. the bit of the scene. Um, and then from that, I'm, I'm sure he... Uh, we, we told him to do it. He submitted it. And then we go through it. We make notes. We, uh, we, we figure out what's wrong with it, what's right about it. It gets put through a couple of drafts, and then we, we have the sketch. That's and then it. always on, on set, there's, a, a, there's going to be more adjustments made and, and improv. Yeah, and, stuff and, like and we, we, we would very often take um, packets of sketches, uh, a, co a collection of sketches from different writers and sit down and read the sketches which we think is, i think is very invaluable because once you feel it when you read it it's um uh it that gives you uh such a, a trevor tro a tre treasure trove of information as to go oh god i never if i had never read it i would have never known that that word or that phrase was awkward in the mouth yeah and that that nobody would say that that way or a character wouldn't say that that way let me let me change that and you can see the you can see as the people are reading this or as we're reading the scripts and assigning characters to other people and you're interacting with each other you can see the writer furiously writing notes going oh that's how it sounds oh i didn't think it would sound that way did it always make sense which part each of you should play in the sketch or were there times where you're like oh, yeah. like up to the very end you're like eh. There's a couple that got swapped Switched. at the mm -hmm. very end. Really? Um, yeah. Um, but I think it was more, it, it had something, it, it would usually have more to do with something like balance than anything else. Like maybe there's a character, you know, maybe there's some kind of thing where it's like, well, I've, I've played a woman twice this season, so I think right. you should be, you know, that kind of thing. Right, right. Um, but for the most part, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, straightforward. It's pretty it just makes sense yeah you know, especially the deeper we got into the seasons because yeah. then yeah. especially you know we don't do what um we have a different style of sketch than say uh, the nick kroll show yeah which where the nick kroll show you would see there would be um pro there were probably about seven storylines and, and and he would always visit two to three of those storylines per show and then also write individual sketches that, that were standalone with us, we had way less recurring characters through, through I think, the entire body of our, of our piece. So maybe every three episodes, you'd see recurring characters. Um, and so, but, but the, we still had, we still had um, a stable of those characters. So that allowed us to, to know who was going to be cast in those. Or, or, or sometimes I think if we wrote a similar sketch, We'd say, well, this one, we're going to have Keegan do this and Jordan have this. And then every now and again, we go, you know what? Why don't we make that sketch? Uh, let, let's make that sketch for these characters that already exist. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I, I, when it's a partnership like that, I mean, everybody's got an ego and you guys are always, it's just, you know, Kim and Peele, Kim and Peele, Kim and Peele. At, at some point, do you start feeling like I kind of want to be my own person a little bit while also having this thing? When do you hit that point? Well, you know, I mean, we, we definitely have, we have a, a world of projects that we want to do outside of Key and Peele. Right. But I think, I mean, I think part of the, the secret of Key and Peele is that we're, we and the, the writers, we have this improvisation uh, background. And there's, you know, the, w one of the, the things you work at hard in improvisation is to lose the ego in the creative process. Um, it's it's built into the fabric of the process. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and you know, f you know, throughout our careers, it's you know, anytime you 
forego those those the feelings and that that the 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 the, the negative feelings and um, sidestep the ego. That was my idea. No, I yeah. said it first. If, like, that, if you get rid of that, yeah. if you get rid of that, then it just uh, well, it then, makes you can make something much greater than any single person could make. It's just this: you, you can you can bicker all you want about that was my idea. Who had that line? Hey, guess what? Is the sketch funny? <laughs> That's Great. all that matters. All that matters is if the sketch is funny. Everybody, the team is called Key and Peel. All the writers, the producers, yeah. the crew, that's Key and Peel. Mm -hmm. It's not this guy and that guy. So we're winning. Like we're winning. You know, everybody's winning. And yeah. at the, the end of the day, the you ego know, plays tricks on you uh, if, if you allow it, you know, because the ego will, w would have you believe. compare, yeah, compare yourself to somebody. You know, it's like if, 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 if I were to compare myself to Keegan. Uh, you know the just and and how he's doing ego wise. I mean, you, I get you could get so wrapped up in that, right? That that you you know you you could never get out of it. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. I mean, you really do have to. Uh, I mean, Jim Henson had this whole philosophy about look, it's the you, your ego has to be replaced with the ego of the show. Yeah. Right. You know, we right. we have to be. We'll, we'll we'll all succeed. If we make this thing gold, like like he, can we say. had that at Grantland. Like yeah, I, I Grantland, felt like yeah. there was a selflessness, which is really hard to get to with writers because writers are precious kind of, about their yeah, work. Their DNA yeah. is always going to be they. It's their byline. They want the credit, and you know, by especially by like year three, we were able to get multiple writers just to write. We call them shoot arounds, but you know, get people to contribute to the Oscars reactions and collaborate, and got yeah, to a yeah. point where people just felt like. If the site wins, we win. And that's why with this new site we're building, it's gotta be the same philosophy. Like you all win if the site's good. You the, know? The Henson it's a hard place to get to. Yeah, no, it is it, it, it is if uh, it, 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 it is if people won't buy in. Like you have to figure out there's another agree ingredient, and the ingredient is what makes you buy in. And um, I mean I think the sports analogy, like the Jim Hintz analogy for me was um was Larry um Oh boy, his name just flew. Who was the head coach of the Pistons when they won the Larry last Brown. championship? Larry Brown. When Larry Brown got there, he had some relationships with those guys, so everybody else bought in. And when they went to the finals against the Lakers, it was remember, it's five against two. Right. We, there's no way we're not going to win the championship. It's five against two. They're a mess over there. Yeah. We win because Shaq and Kobe have Achilles heels and they're their egos. Yeah. We're a team. It's every night, it's five against two. And that's how they won that championship. So for us, it, it for us, I think everybody understood. It's almost like they're serving Key and Peel second, and we were serving the god of improvisation first. Yeah, which is I'm a heel if I don't yes and the other people here. If I'm holding on to what I think my idea is, and I'm not open to anybody else's ideas, and I'm not gonna let go of the reins, then you're, uh, you know, not to get too lofty, but you're dishonoring Del Close, you're dishonoring uh, 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 Viola Spolin, you're dishonoring uh, the masters of improvisation who are very sacred and important to us. These people have passed away and gave us these traditions. So don't, you know, it's like, you know, don't, hey, make, make an effort to, do the best you can for the great spirits. You know, it's like that feeling. And that was almost more important than Key and Peele. It's what makes Key and Peele work. There's a great book about the first five years of Saturday Night Live, the first 10 years actually, that came out like I think 30 years ago yeah. before people realized that they shouldn't be that candid in the interviews. <laughs> I think it was it was uh, Saturday, I can't remember. It was, it was Doug Hill and Jeff Weingrad, I think were the writers, mm -hmm. but a big chunk of it is about those first couple of years. And like they had that same spirit and that same camaraderie, but then Chevy Chase took off. Yeah. And yeah. And everybody's backs got up. Yeah. And it's, and Belushi went crazy because he used to kill Chevy Chase for years in the national lampoon, all the different things they did. He was the best. Like when Belushi was on stage, you looked at Belushi. Right. And they, and when Chevy Chase left, that's when, at least for a little while, they were able to become a team. And then, of course, Belushi and Aykroyd took off, and then it happened it again. again. It's yeah. really hard in comedy, because eventually somebody's going to, when you have an ensemble like that, that's why I thought what you guys did was, was pretty rare, because well, it was Jordan, five years of it. What Jordan said, too, is true. I mean, somebody, I don't know who this is. It's an anonymous quote, but comparison is the thief of joy. So we're not, 
it's the other thing is recognizing what the dreams of the other people in your life are yeah. and yes anding those dreams or supporting and booing up their dreams i'm very excited extremely excited to see this horror movie that jordan wrote that he directed that you produced it as well you're a producer mm -hmm, on that mm -hmm. on the movie it's such a passion for him and having spent so much time with him in my life and seeing the glint in his eye when he because he has an encyclopedic knowledge he's a connoisseur of horror of of, of, of horror as a genre and the subgenres therein he knows all of it he's mm. uh, like the way mike tyson knows boxing lore this guy knows horror movies and to see don't, that don't to, do anything like mike tyson <laughs> to, to, to see those dreams to see that dream come true yeah. for mm -hmm. him, that's my joy. It, there's no joy in going, well, why didn't he cast me in the horror movie? <laughs> there's not a part for you in the horror movie, Keegan. Yeah. Let, he, he supports your dreams. Right. You support his dreams. What, 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 what do I get from, from not supporting his dreams? Like what, what, what positive thing do I get? What, what benefit do I get from that? Quick aside, mm -hmm. where are horror movies going? Because horror movies always go... They up do and these down, cycles and, and like Halloween launches this whole five, six year genre of the babysitters dying and then they go to the different and then Scream brought some stuff back and then you have the Saw era and then you have like the Grizzly, then you have the Blair Witch era. I mean, there's mm -hmm. all these different eras. So where are we now? Um, it's a good question. I, I, I predict a good amount of uh, sci-fi horror blend. Sci-fi horror. I like we're, it. Interesting. Good special effects. Yeah, we're definitely, we're at an era where... I think people are really interested in science fiction and the AI and and uh, uh, you know the internet and where where is the, where is this all headed? Because we you know it's been it's been crazy. I, I mean, the last ten years have just been a complete you know technological revolution in, uh, in a very creepy way. Yeah, 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 and, yeah, it, yeah. and it feels very like we're headed to some or in this weird dystopia. Dystopia. Did you see Unfriended? I did. I did see Unfriended. It's on. It's on cable. Uh, Unfriended is good, but it's basically they're just all on like this Google chat. Yeah. But somebody that they had made fun of who killed themselves. Yeah. It's, enters the chat and starts messing oh, with them. Oh, that's it's what good. it's about. It's it's, it's good. It's, it's pretty good. I let gotta me, say. Let me ask you two guys this because yeah. I haven't seen it. What is what is the appeal or what do you think made the film? It follows um, a good film. Oh, interesting. I'm. I mean, did you? Did, well, actually, I thought because I think you told me that you had enjoyed it. You were captivated I, I by it. it. Yeah. I thought oh, yeah. it was excellent, and you thought yeah. it was excellent yeah. too. And I've not yet seen it, and I wanted to know because I'm. I'm horror really gets me. I get yeah. my yeah. imagination gets a little too crazy, <laughs> and so it's a little harder for me. But he knows enough to recommend certain types of horror movies to me, like The Babadook. I love. You love The Babadook, but. But anyway, I'm sorry. I digressed from my own question. But uh, the, it follows as a really great in the spirit of the throwback. You know, yes. it's, ah, it's okay. doing this early '80s thing. It's this John Carpenter thing. Yes. That's why Halloween is in my pantheon. So that's yeah, why yeah. I liked it. It reminded that's me it. of like modern I mean, Halloween. Totally, the soundtrack. Oh, interesting. Okay. Had the theme of like if you have sex with somebody in high school, you're gonna pay for it. That was mm -hmm. in there, oh, which that, is a, that, that that's moral, a horror movie staple. Total horror yeah, movie yeah, staple. Um, moral staple. Yeah, and it's but, be beautifully shot too. Beautifully it is. Shot. Okay. Oh, it yeah. looks, it looks gorgeous. And, and that's one of the keys with nothing. horror. Yeah, it costs nothing, but. One of the keys with horror films, the ones that I've worked is usually the ones that are well done have a better chance and it sounds yeah. stupid, but yeah. like Halloween's a really well done movie. Yeah, you yeah, watch yeah. it, it's like the shots he does and the way mm -hmm. he uses shadows and lights. There's a confidence with yeah. it too. And a, a knowledge that this it's when all the pieces are put together, it's going to be very scary. Right. And it's, I mean, because he's just, he's stringing together images. It's not, a, it's not a movie about revelation. It's not a movie about, um, you know, jump scares. It's it's all this pace and this creepy monster. It's like you it's got it's uh it's one of those movies that sometimes I don't like when directors or creative people give interviews because sometimes the mystery is better than the actual. Yes, answer. Totally. And you read the John Carpenter. It's like yeah, I mean, we initially thought it was going to be this, and we were doing stuff on the fight, and you realize like he was just no, no, had 20, 20 days to make this movie about babysitters getting murdered, basically. And well, probably you know, stumbled into some of it. It's, and this is why we we love improvisation is because I think it, it's such an important piece of anybody's creative process to be able to adjust towards yeah. the end, especially, and be able to sacrifice things that you thought were important and uh, find new things. And uh, so that's that. 
with what we do as Key, as Key and Peele, along with uh, our director, uh, Peter Atencio, who also did Keanu, it's like that's part of our process is, you know, we set ourselves up to succeed, but now let's get in there and let's find some, some more. Before we go on with Key and Peele, a quick word about our friends at Squarespace. Building a website can be pretty daunting, whether it's a business site, a portfolio, a restaurant, whatever else. In this day and age, there is a ton of pressure to represent yourself in a way that looks good online. So thank God for our buddies at Squarespace. They build gorgeous websites for normal people who do not know how to build websites. Like my buddies, Louis K and Joe House. They both have Squarespace websites. Uh, Squarespace makes it easy regardless of skill level. No coding needed, easy to use tools, state-of-the-art technology, 24 seven online support and you get a beautiful website for only $8 per month. You even get a free domain if you buy Squarespace for one year. So why wait? Start your trial with no credit card required. Go to squarespace.com. Use the offer code BS for 10% off your first purchase. And since we're here, um, I wanted to mention the books, which is going to be really important for you because Mother's Day is May 8th. And that's pretty soon. Yeah, I get it. It sneaks up on you every year. I have a mom. I have a stepmom. I have my wife, who's the mother of my kids. So, you know, Mother's Day, you got to be prepared. Uh, you still have enough time to order mom the best flowers of your of her life. You can do it from books.com. Books flowers are, in a word, gorgeous. They're grown at eco-friendly farms on the side of a volcano. Seriously, a volcano. The blooms are larger, the colors are more vibrant, better soil, more sun. It's a whole lofty 10,000 feet thing. But you have to order from books.com today because if you wait until the last second, you end up getting second rate flowers. Seriously, it's happened to me. You get the bad ones. You gotta, you gotta think ahead with flowers. Um, and your mom will know, your wife will know, your stepmother will know, your girlfriend will know, your baby mama will know. They'll all know. Um, Gorgeous flowers from the books really do say, thanks mom. Thank you for everything you do. Or thanks honey, thanks for raising our kids correctly. So what does it cost? Well, it's a mere $40. That's where the prices start at books.com. No upcharges, no extra fees. Even delivery is absolutely free as long as you register with the books. Listeners of the BS podcast save 20% off the bouquet of your choice. So just go to books.com and enter promo code bill. That's B-O-U-Q-S dot com. Promo code Bill. All right, back to Key and Peele. Where's improv in 2016 in the world of if you go one step over the line and you get the outrage culture maniacs after you and all that stuff, you could get in a heap of shit. Do you feel like people are more walking on uh, eggshells a little bit now or do you do people not even think about it that are in, in do what you do in re, in regards to <laughs> to improv i mean the beauty is we can go anywhere and it'll be edited in in a in a movie or, or something yeah but is you that, could you know. also be like on stage just fucking around with somebody and yeah. I don't know. Oh, you're saying, yeah, you're, you're saying so, like in an improv scene, if somebody yeah. comes and sees a show oh, yeah, and go, yeah, yeah, how yeah. dare you say that? Yeah, or yeah. anything. Or you even know? like some sketch that you're trying to get. I mean, your show's done now, but you're trying to get these things and it's up and maybe you could have spent one more day thinking about whether you should do this and then it's out in the world and uh, everyone see, lines up on you. We've been doing improv for a long time but between the two of us. And I wouldn't say that we're in a different era necessarily than when we started which you know is i agree with 10 that to 15 okay. years i agree ago. that we're not in, we're, i agree that we're in the same era good of, yeah of, yeah of, of you know but you know there's a politically correctness it, the, the whole thing is you got to get the laugh if you don't get the laugh any place you go can it can be put up to scrutiny and you know you don't you don't want to sw- go blue or go with something that's upsetting or topical and not get the laugh or uh, otherwise uh, you fail if people laugh they will figure out why it was okay right that you told that joke right right and and that, that, that you have to make um how shall i say it like make assurances that what you're doing and the choices you're making even in the this is hard but even in the moment on stage the choices that you're making you're not making out of fear so that very often you will see a comedian whether they be a stand up or they or or a making a choice out of lack and what i mean by that is i thought Maybe I'd get some giggles or some love from an audience that doesn't know me. Maybe, maybe they'll give me a little, little, little leeway. Yeah. And then there's a lack. 
And so then you start saying, you start doing like, you're just delivering blue material for no reason or, or offensive material because you, if I can get some reaction from them. Right. So you're making decisions out of fear instead of, instead of penetrating your partner psychically so that everything comes from them they're the entire well that you're pulling from don't don't worry about the audience Let, you know mesmerize the audience by having this amazing connection with this person you're standing across from that will never change that hasn't changed since the 50s since that hasn't changed since viola spolin wrote her book uh, improvisation for the theater but i think what happens is people make these adjustments on the fly out of ego and 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 then and that's when you get in and trouble that's when you get in trouble that's when you get in trouble and improv yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we, uh, part of our job as comedians, you know, when we talk about uh, sketch movies, uh, all of it is, you know, what our, what our heroes, our comedy heroes did, which is, yeah, you, you, you push the line, but you give it enough love and attention that you, you, you do it right. And if you can figure that out, then you can you know the that that's the true value of comedy is is yeah. helping people uh you know reconcile all the 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 horrors and the dark things about the human condition and humanity um in in a in a fun way yeah my friend uh wesley morris who wrote for Grant for a long time he wrote a great piece about you guys wrote last an year. amazing piece it was, about us it was, it was really I mean, one of the best kudos to wesley I, yeah. it was he he found things in my opinion he found things about negro town that i hadn't thought of <laughs> and i went oh my god that's amazing i you know obser the man he's so He's great. Observational. It's uh, it, that it was. Just, I know it was about us, so it's hard for me to, to say. Yeah, it, but yeah, yeah. It was an outstandingly written piece and so thoughtfully written. So one of his themes was basically that the way you guys approached race on that show was almost like the the legacy of Chappelle's show. Like the torch had been passed to you. So who has the torch now? Um, you know that's that's a good that's question. A really good question. I, yeah. I, there, Whoever whoever uh, wants it, really. I mean, we 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 don't we don't approach race very. I mean, we, we do we do the racial humor because our heroes did it. Our our, our black uh, comedic heroes did it, and uh, you know we look at from, you know from our specific perspective. I think we look at all the uh the racial material that hasn't been done yet because it hasn't been seen through our eyes yeah um it hasn't been uh, ex explored what so that's it's it's a very personal thing um yeah, I mean, when, when I we guess do the like, racial i guess there's better way to phrase that question is there's just kind of a void because there's especially look at this election right now yeah your show would have been uh valuable yeah. Not just funny, but I think it would have been you would have had some really important moments on it. You know, well, I, I wonder. How, I wonder if one way to look at it is hopefully, if the, because of the void, there may be a sense of yearning yeah. from some young comedian, and my hope or comedians, or, uh, my hope is that the comedians have some set of tools that allow them to comedically look at the situations we're dealing with presently in a responsible way um par you know what's filled the void a little bit and the only reason i know this is because my kids love one of these shows and they, i have a 10 year old and eight year old but my kids love blackish mm -hmm. and yeah. blackish and yeah. carmichael show yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely them, yeah they've kind of brought back what we grew up with in the yeah. 80s the very special episode but it's much more well done than that but mm -hmm. right. blackish Blackish really goes a couple yeah, places. Those are great shows. You know? It does. And so, it's both of those shows work. No, that's a good. Yeah. That's a good point, Bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that both of those guys, the, the, um, um, Kenya and 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 Gerard, are being very brave, and they're doing it in a bigger, uh, a bigger arena. With that's like, broadcast like, television. Yeah, almost like a higher degree of difficulty in a way because it's so hard to just be interesting on network TV. Yeah, on network. So yeah, many yeah, obstacles. Yeah. You have forty executives. I mean, how many people gave you guys notes? But. By year four, well, did you even get notes? notes? But we got barely very anything. Just let you go, right? Yeah, yeah. let us go. I think I think one weapon. I, I it's not to uh, weapon. One tool yeah. that you can use to is that those uh, those forty executives look. Everybody wants to keep their job, and everyone's trying to do the best, and they want the show to be good. Um, but they're giving the notes, and I think I, I've said this before. I said sometimes you can just you just show your holster. 
Yeah. Just show your holster. So if Kenya and Anthony in the most discreet or the most positive way can just show their holster, which is the way of saying, you know, I'm not going to pull my race card. Yeah. I'm just going to make everyone aware that I have one. And then let's work out what your what your concerns seem to be about this page of dialogue. And, and I think that's what they're doing as opposed to there being any kind of outrage. And, and for some reason, they're writing they're writing episodes so well that the executives have to go, this is good. It's funny. I mean, I, we, you know what I mean? Let, let them do their thing. And then when yeah. they get feedback for it, then now you now you can go because it's like, oh, people love that. Okay, you guys should you go keep exactly. doing that. When but you they have the feedback, to actually right. see the results. I mean, we mm -hmm. had, and, and our, our guys, they were great. I mean, they, they had things that they wanted to do. I mean, really, what, wouldn't you say, Jordan, the big thing is they wanted us to have such a specific voice. Yeah. And we're like, we promise you that's exactly what will happen. And um, and they and they pulled back a little bit and watched it, and then the data came in. You, you know, was mm -hmm. it? Do you feel like you were fortunate because you you were able to get some reps on Mad TV, which was still a network show, but not kind of the same profile as your own show with your own name on it and right, Comedy right. Central. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think the the best thing about Mad TV for me was was the learning I, I got to do. You know, yeah. really kind of really kind of got to figure out what uh what tv was about how to how, mm -hmm. how to sell it on tv how to write for tv um so yeah it was it was instrumental and then of course that's where we started working together right and keegan and i started working together so that it was uh it was a very very important that was fortuitous yeah oh yeah it I mean, I, yeah it, it, it was it was it was our um our proving ground and i was i was very fortunate to have a front row seat to watch his development yeah, and, and and watch him turn into the right there. And there are sketches. And the other thing I really admire about Jordan is there were sketches that he wrote and put a lot of time and energy and thought into that, you know, the powers that be at Mad TV were not responding to. But he's always striving to be better. So I don't think I can't think of a single sketch that you wrote for Mad TV that didn't go or wasn't made or produced that you repeated at Key and Peele. Yeah, he just right, moved right. on to the next step. He's like, that was what that was. That was part of my maturation process. Now I'm on this. Now I'm on this. And 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 so it makes me excited to see like, where's he going to be in ten years? What happens to you, you guys know? if in like 2008, Lauren Michaels is like, well, let's get those guys from from Mad TV. We'll get both of them. We'll bring them here. And I you're mean, just on SNL from 2008 on. <laughs> we'd host. We'd love to host. We'd love That'd to host. It. Yeah. Had we, but you're no, saying I mean, if I'm we saying had been on the member. show. I'm saying if he had hired you guys to I'm, be in the cast. Oh, if, if, if back in 2008. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we we have a very different uh, path, trajectory. trajectory. Yeah, I'm not sure. We I think this we'd worked be, out better. We'd be here talking with you right now. Yeah, we'd, pro we'd, probably, out yeah, we'd probably still be on the show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They yeah. got them long. <laughs> Well, they I mean, got I mean, them long contracts over there. Or I mean, you're, the other, you're dying. they get them long contracts. The other weird thing is, yeah, you're right. We'd still be on the show. Um, <laughs> we even without you're right, even without a uh, renewal, probably. But uh, the, the the who knows? In an alternate universe, if we were on SNL in 2008, Obama. we may be we may be the the next Blues Brothers. Oh, yeah. Right. You know well, who knows? You know, and who don't knows? get this wrong. It's like you know we both got got into comedy i think the goal was let's oh, yeah. snl let's get you on us before, 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 before we knew each other i was that's, gonna say that's, that's gotta goal. be yeah you know? it, i don't it, think that ever changes either no no but there's it, 20 year old kids now that's probably feeling the exact same absolutely. way when you teach improv classes that's what you, you, you you're always I, I just finished making this movie and i'm just starting to do press for it it's a mike berbiglia movie called yeah. don't think twice and this is exactly what it's about and like you said it's about chevy skyrocketed to to, to stardom and then what's the rest of the group do and uh, do they start feeding off of each other or eating each other, you know? And that's the exact thing. It's that you, you're you in this environment where you're all supposed to be supporting each other and then someone gets plucked out of the environment. And then you can't do that comparison thing that Jordan was talking about, which was like, so what are they saying? They're saying he's better than we are. And once that virus gets in there, that's a problem. The only yeah. time it, it got so thrown out of whack it was actually like it hurt the show in some ways was with eddie murphy because he's the best cast member they've <laughs> yeah, ever they had it was, he was like the mm -hmm. most over qualified person you for ever could have put job. on that show oh, yeah i don't even know how somebody else could have been on that show with him the guy was like 
it, like he was a cross between like Michael Jordan and LeBron no. and right, Barry right. Sanders. Right, it was right, like right. everything yeah. you'd ever put into one person. And it's had. interesting that, but if you look at people's paths, that was his moment. And then his moment lasted for a very long time. But look who one of the greatest female comedic voices of and all time is buried right now. on that show. It's Julie Louis Dreyfus. Yeah. And buried on the. And she was like 20. 20 years old. And remember, she used to do sketches all the time with the guy. Uh, his name was Gary Kroger. Yeah. Remember Gary Kroger? It was her. Kroger. It was those two and Brad Hall, right? And Brad They're Hall right. Right. and, and, yeah. and Kazarinsky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They all got pulled up from Chicago and like yeah. just. It's the worst time. It's like, oh yeah, I've got my surfboard. I'm ready to hit the water. SNL, and they're the, and then you didn't know there wasn't a guy There's named a Eddie tsunami. Murphy on surfboard. He was the tsunami. My he God. was the tsunami that just his talent just couldn't be denied. <laughs> it was yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, incredible. And also, uh, it, you know, uh, the timing was just perfect too. I mean, right. it was is this, and you know, yeah. when we talk about race, it's like you, you, we need black voices out there because there's. There's a lot of comedy that white voices can't <laughs> can't do. Right. And so, you know, Eddie Murphy coming out and all of a sudden sort of making fun of culture, making fun of the culture of the the way that that genera the bo baby boomer generation grew up, you know, with like, you know, there's a comedic take on on uh, buckwheat. You know, it's like right. that that's the kind of thing that was just like stretched like a rubber band and ready to pop off. And then here we go. We got the all of a sudden the best stand-up comedic actor comes along gets the shot and it's just and like it's just murder yeah oh i mean he just 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 yeah. straight Khmer rouge I wrote, just a, murder. I wrote a giant piece about him when uh tower heist was coming out yeah. it was yeah. supposed to be the eddie comeback and uh and i thought one of the reasons he succeeded was like when i was growing up i'm a little older than you guys i think i'm 46. oh you're, you're older than me yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. um so there was this whole run of like television shows with like black families and black yep. characters. Yeah, the Norman Lear stuff. Yeah. And by eighty one, it was over, right. and like the only black people on TV were basically George Jefferson, uh, Arnold, and mm -hmm. Isaac the Bartender. And Isaac and that the was Bartender. It. Yeah, yeah. And it was like and the networks were like, "Here you go, Black America. Here are your three characters." Right. And then Eddie shows up on SNL, and it was like a tsunami. And yeah, it was like right. he's could not into be denied. Yeah, everything. Well, the and, whole vibe of that show was so rugged and uh, you know not ready for prime time. So when, right. by the time they got him, it's like this is the this is the black guy who's not ready for prime time. Watch out. He's gonna, but it, but he was so ready for. But he was, very, he was already he was ready very for ready, and he was talk about the timing, right? You we were you were so fortunate that he never got plucked by a um, by a multicam. Oh, that yeah. would have destroyed him. That might have well, or actually, he was so undeniably talented. Yeah, I, don't I don't think know, nothing would have stopped him. Can't imagine one thing the, he wouldn't have. No, yeah, and, and, and the best defense stopped him. That was like best defense. Did, that did stop him. For <laughs> a little he bit, just did yeah. that for the money. I don't blame him for that. Yeah. Kind of nice big check. No, yeah, never in the same room with uh, Dudley Moore. Ever. Oh, that's that, right. That's the thing was never in the same. They room paid him late, they paid right? Him late, just yeah. he shot no, all these. I different... never saw this one. This yeah. one so and, uh, it's terrible. It's a bad. Okay. I think movie. Eddie paid to destroy all the clips. Did he really? Yeah, oh, I, think it's I, I believe he did. Yeah. I believe any rich actor, like if there's some bad movie they made, I think they just buy it. <laughs> they out. just buy it. There's no side no, of yeah, it. He, Clooney has a couple. I think he just bought out. You, I <laughs> wonder. I, I almost, I challenge all three of us or anybody in this room. We should go online and see if there's a best defense clip. Like, did he get them all? Or you think he just cleared it out? Or is there one on YouTube? And, then, and that's when there's a, a clip from Best Defense. He was like a tank. God. I went. I paid. I, I was like, I don't care if there reviews. Eddie's in it. And then we're just you just became sad. Like, this is wow. Bad. He came I mean, in trying to do Eddie it's, stuff. It's hands down the worst movie he it's ever terrible. made. <laughs> ever made. Well, and, he, and that's nine, saying something with that guy's no, career. The 90s were rough. The 90s were rough. were rough, but I think Best Defense was even worse than um, than some. Did of the he other ever ones. reach out to you guys? No, no, I don't think so. Never met him. Never met him. No. Uh, yeah, I mean that'll be uh, that'll be a real uh, humbling experience to meet that guy. When did Obama reach out to you? Twenty twelve. He was here for a, a Clooney fundraiser, and because he has we, a good sense of humor, I imagine yeah. he watched Great the Luther thing. It was just like, I like these guys. Let's, Let's bring them in. Yeah. Yep. Oh the, yeah. The photographer, awesome. man, Pete, the Pete, the White House photographer is the person who introduced the president to to Obama Luther. I remember he like about tripped and fell down trying to get over to us. He was oh, like, yeah. I'm the guy, I'm the guy. I'm the guy. I'm the guy. That, that, I, 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 I the showed it to him. IPod. I showed it to him. I showed it to him. Yeah. He was just losing his no, mind. No, apparently they would they would play poker games and you know, show pass around the, the phone with a you know, our bits and but the, the yeah, the fact that he responded to the show, I mean to us the the coolest thing was that he sort of anointed Luther 
as saying something that r r rang true to him. Yeah, which is kind of you know more than we could, we could have asked we never for. Never bargained for it. We we had no idea that was going to happen. That was he was amazing. the first president that nobody knew had a parody for like basically almost his entire first term. People I mean, were like, "What do we do with this?" Oh, yeah. what do we do. I mean, look what we did. Yeah, what, what we, we did is he just does a dead on perfect impersonation of him. And then yeah. we had another surrogate character. Do like alter ego. It was, we had to yeah. have an alter ego. Like, how else were we going to do it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The, was, the only other one who really... Pharaoh does a good impression of him. Mm -hmm. But uh, I thought The Rock, when The Rock did basically The Rock as Barack Obama, yeah. mm -hmm. that kind of tapped into how Obama can sound so lyrical sometimes when he talks and yeah. almost like a preacher. And The Rock did that. And I thought that... Did a the nice job of hitting Ross, something. Rock also has that kind of that magic. They that have, yeah, he's like, and they have a similar voice. There's similar yeah, timbre in their voice. That's what I like yeah. about it. I was like, oh, this is good. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, w I had uh, we were shooting test shows for the HBO show, and oh, Obama's yeah, yeah. speechwriter was on, John Favreau. John Favreau, his, his yeah. yeah, he's a mm -hmm. great guy, and he was talking about how Obama would, you know, he's basically in this bubble. He's got all these people around him um, that are just doing jobs for him and right, right. very deferential to him, obviously. So the way he experiences real American life is through sports, through books, through TV shows. And he ends up, you know, kind of gravitating toward, like he plays golf with the PTI guys all the time. Will Bonner Kornheiser. With Will Bonner Kornheiser, right. They're just right. buddies because he watches them on the treadmill and he feels like those are his people. So I'm well, sure with, I did not know that. he just reaches out to different Realize people I, I that can, resonate I can with him. I pretty them. much uh, hang with anybody I want. <laughs> right. That's cool. <laughs> All right, this I get great. this. I get it. This is the president, huh? Yep. Let's, uh, <laughs> send uh, send Cam Peel over. Let's see. Let's talk to these guys. <laughs> that Hamilton yeah. show, I love. Uh, I want to see Hamilton. Yeah. Yeah. Let's bring yeah, those let's, guys in. Yeah. Let's, can we uh, have Hamilton do uh, the show in, in the bedroom? <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be great. I noticed he he's in a commercial now with Steph Curry, which was clearly Obama oh. just being like, "I just want to just have Steph Curry. I just want to hang out with him for an hour." Right, right. Can we just, and can I we think come up with the commercial, commercial because Curry went to the went to the White House and went to the Rose Garden. Yeah, and they played horse. Oh yeah, which yeah, is yeah, crazy. I think he just wanted to extend Curry's stay as long as he could. As yeah. long as he could. Let's do a commercial. Yeah. <laughs> what what about doing, LeBron? Man? What's going on oh, with LeBron? Him? Right, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah that's it's cool. a, I could tell you're kind of secretly a sports fan. I love sports because you were rattling, rattling off the 04 finals. Yeah, I mean, well, and also just a Detroit sports fan. But I love. Okay. I've always loved sports because sports. I watched as a child. You watch how. The big thing is how it brings sons and fathers together. Yeah. You know what I mean? You have this disparate relationship, and especially if you're my age, like, you know, it's just fathers for the most part in general. But you know, my dad and I, you know, it was, it was his friends and them liking sports. And it's part of, literally, it's part of why I went to Penn State. Because one of my dad's best friends loved Rosie Greer. Yeah. And Jack Lambert and Jack Ham and loved all those guys because he grew up in, in Pittsburgh. So all of the stars were Penn State stars. And then they went to this, you know, like people went to this, like Franco, for Franco to be at Penn State and, and go to the Steelers is an amazing thing. To so you saw Penn the State. Ed Marinaro TV movie about the Penn State running back and his, um, his brother who was. Remember that one? Which one? The, the, the Ed Marinaro was John Capaletti was Oh, Capaletti yeah, won the Heisman Trophy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And John his Capaletti. brother was like the... It was one of the original tearjerker TV movies. Oh, Before yeah. Brian's song. Yeah, it was, right, yeah. was kind of like Around the Brian's song. Brian song. Yeah. And, and, I'm ready but, for I mean, more of those. Watching hmm. them connect in that way, being a little boy, and yeah. watching those two men connect that way was interesting. And then, and then I'd say, oh, I'll watch the Pittsburgh Steelers, even though you know I've been a diehard Detroit Lions fan most of my life, but... It was because these men were you were I was watching grown ups get excited about something. And that's, that's what's missing thing. with this my son's generation is when I was a kid, I just wanted to hang out with my dad, and my dad watched sports, so I love sports because of my dad. Because you did, right. right. Now my son's like, I'm going to go on YouTube and watch uh, the 25 best wrestling finished moves. Mm -hmm. right, I'll right. see you guys in an hour. It's but like, then he can, but then he can yeah. with me? Right, but then he can also watch whatever he wants. Yes. It doesn't even have to be wrestling. It can be anything he wants. And it doesn't have to, right? And, and it's not with you. He'll stumble <laughs> on you guys eventually. Right now, he's still in... Uh, he's at 8 and 10? He's right. 8. So he's like two years away from you guys. But right now he's in the whole like he's banged out every Kimmel prank, you know. Because <laughs> yeah. on YouTube it's just the ne like if you watch one of your any of your sketches, like the the next three are on the right side. You just go for three hours. Sure. sure. Mm -hmm. So the Kimmel pranks it's just one after it just goes one after another. Eight yeah. year olds just like if you guys really want to make seven hundred million dollars, you should just study all of the beats of all the Sandler movies. Right. Where yes. it's like. 
people who have to take a shit but can't find a toilet and people getting attacked <laughs> right. by a small dog and right. there's 20 beats like that's your that's your thing that's yeah your that's your 700 dollars movie the science, just hit huh? all the beats yeah did you the 10 year old knows about us though you see an eight year old and a 10 year old or you just no, have the eight year old boy is two years away from knowing no, about you but the you also have a 10 year old the 10 year old girl oh i wouldn't see almost, much almost, almost ready for a couple yeah gotcha i gotcha. would say of yeah. of if you were going to show Starting her, to get comedy. if you were, if she's getting comedy, you were going to show her a Key and Peele sketch in this time of her life. Would you, would you show her? I, what would you show her? Hats. I think she'd get soul food. She'd get soul food. Mm. Okay, I do. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, I should get the ones where people are playing off each other. I don't know if black guys she would get. Yeah. Well, you like know, she would get the Obama one, one like one, that, like the uh, ones that are easier to understand because 10 year olds don't aren't that smart yet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I think one of the things we love about how our show was re was received and, and how it worked is because it was a family thing. Yeah. And there's a lot of uh, sons and daughters and fathers and mothers that watch the show together or right. show each other things. Now, you know, for me, I remember watching In Living Color with my mom. Yeah. And whenever something, you know, first of all, you, you get a good, when she would laugh at something I wouldn't get, I would get a little bit of an education as to why that was funny. Um, and then there were, you know, if something sort of crossed the line or it, it's basically a great way to have a, a family experience, but also kind of educate because right. you know, the, it, it, a lot of things will warrant a conversation afterward. And it can be with this fun not awkward tone because we've we've broken the we've broken the conversation open with this with this silly mm -hmm, scene mm -hmm, mm -hmm. don't you feel like every funny person had one funny family member from them when they were like eight seven eight nine years old because like for me like my dad's family would always be around you yeah. know opening yeah. presents for mm -hmm. four hours and my dad would always make fun of the people like his brothers and sisters. I was like, yeah. someday I'm going to make those jokes. You know, you, you try, you're yeah. sick. And you would so say sick. that, right? Yeah, yeah. I was like, someday I'm going to be the um, funny one. It's the little boy that it's playing yeah. Eddie Murphy at the beginning of Raw. Totally. The cold open mm -hmm. in Raw. And the one uncle's like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like boy, that little yeah. boy, boy, he's funny. Yeah. Yeah, and you're, and that, that net, I mean, getting that kind of feedback from an adult is magical. Yeah. It's magical. When you make the adults laugh, you've made it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I won't be showing my kids? Keanu. <laughs> I'm no, gonna avoid that one. We wanted, you know, we, there might be a TNT heavily edited version that might be sustainable in like a year and a half. You know, I mean, it's uh, to each their own. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that because I like the, I like the idea of making a movie that is kind of like a kid's. The, the kid gets to go oh, download. It's like they sneak in when the parents are in. asleep. They have to watch camera. Yeah, That's like Amazon Women right, on right, the Moon right. was for me, you know, where it was like you were just getting to see yeah. something you weren't supposed to see. That's oh, a, you'll that's... have a lot of people who shouldn't be watching this. Oh, no. This, I, yeah. I have There's a no feeling question. that Keanu is going to go the way of Deadpool. Do you know how many eight, nine, and ten year old kids have yeah. seen Deadpool? Right. Because their their aunts and uncles and their grandparents are just going, you know, it's the superhero movie. Yeah, and he does a, I saw the commercial, did some flips, and a girl punched mm -hmm. a guy across the place. We'll take we'll take Junior to that. And I'm yeah. I'm working with somebody right now, and she's mortified because she let her mother take her son to the movie. And I'm like, yeah, to, 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 to Deadpool. Yeah. So her Ooh. she doesn't want her mother. In in the in 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 the final analysis, she wouldn't want her mother or her son to see the movie. And and then a, a colleague of mine and I said to her, "Whatever you do, don't see it because if you feel bad now, you're gonna feel horrible when yeah. you're like, oh my god, my mother. <laughs> She'll be more mortified that her mother saw it than her son because her son doesn't know some of that stuff. But you don't have a sense of it. I mean, dude, Bill." We got a kitten on the poster. <laughs> it's yeah. gonna be ten year olds right. seeing this movie. Yeah, you know, and they're gonna I tell mean, their friends to trick their parents well, into seeing the movie. You get some pet people because we have this crazy pet fanatic on the Ringer staff. Yeah. Mallory, uh -huh. I told her I saw Keanu. She's like, "How's the cat? The cat doesn't die, right?" She, ah! just, she didn't care. About the, she just wanted to make sure yeah. the cat was cool yeah. and pretty. Yeah. And the the cat thing. doesn't die. No, yeah, uh, we, well, we didn't. We didn't have the the, the balls to kill a kitten in, our first, in our first film. Good not idea. even like you know, that's our only spoiler. Has there. <laughs> yeah, the gun to the puppy's well. head. We just the we couldn't do that. It. <laughs> well, I thought it was really good. I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. That means a lot. It reminded me of some of the movies I grew up with way back when, like a modernized version. Who was, by the way, last question, then we got to go. 
the girl uh, Tiffany Tiffany Haddish High C High C yeah. yeah so where'd she come from Tiffany Haddish she's a she's a stand up she's on the Carmichael show um, she's a, just she's been grinding at it at, at stand up and developing this really amazing act and she's uh, cause that was a hard part hard part oh yeah she, yeah, has, yeah. To be, she has to be grounded but she, has to be a little sexy but has to be like totally street yeah, and there's I mean, a whole bunch mm-hmm. of elements to it I don't know if the movie works as well if that actor oh, sucks no. in that it was, part it was key it was key and I mean her, she's of course you know she's, she's sexy because she is such a badass in the yeah. movie and it's like you know it's 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 sort of like this there's this sort of role role reversal with, with her and i and our yeah. romance where you know she's kind of the protector right <laughs> yeah 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 and i'm and, the yeah. yeah you're the um i'm the damsel of the some damsel sort, right you know? right that's the word she's also she's great and light and goofy in real life but she's also legit you okay. feel it come through the camera i, thought, I, I felt i felt like a little star making performance in that Absolutely. oh no, no. if well, your she's, movie hits big like i think there'll be a lot gonna, of stories she's gonna skyrocket her. she'll be on mm-hmm. something I, I i imagine really good things are about to happen to her yep. and the other yeah. the other big winner i think is george michael without yeah, giving too george much michael. away i think yeah no yeah, yeah, yeah george yeah, michael uh, i mean a, did you have to you have to make sure you could clear all that stuff before oh, yeah. you oh yeah we did yeah, yeah, yeah. oh no we had we to yeah 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 we asked without giving anything away he's he's featured yes he is He's an yep. important part of the movie. Yes, he is. He is the yes, he spirit is. animal of the movie. Yes. Yeah, that's a great way of putting it. Yeah, Jordan. Yeah, and of, and of an animal movie. So that's that's an achievement. I think it's a good move for him to have allowed you to use all those. You you uh, never lose choices so. that you, you made. Ca- you cannot lose when a person has a sense of humor about themselves. You like this is this could very well be George Michael's. This could be his Tom Cruise Tropic Thunder moment. Yeah, Did you see Tropic. You saw Tom Cruise and you went what. Right. He can do that too, right. and now and then once he did that movie, you go and now I even like him a little bit more, because he unHollywooded himself right. when he played that role. And George Michael, this could be that kind of turn for him. Good luck with the movie. Thanks, Thank Bill. You, I really think it's going to do well. I'm excited. Thank you. Well, thanks, yeah, it's going to be fun Thanks. to watch we're it go. I'll, just, I'll be uh, checking the Rotten Tomato scores for okay, you. Okay, all, right, all, right, all, right, all right, all right. And uh, good luck with all, all your other stuff. Thank thanks for coming here. Appreciate Our it. Pleasure. Yeah. All right, thanks to Key and Peele. Remember, Keanu opens on April 29th. That's a Friday. It's very good. You should go see it. Thanks to Squarespace, whether you need a landing page, a beautiful gallery, a professional blog, an online store, or whatever else you want to do online, you can do it on Squarespace. It's all included as well as 24-7 support. If you start your free trial today, squarespace.com, enter offer code BS to get 10% off your first purchase. Thanks to books.com. This Mother's Day, send mom the best flowers of her life. You can even tell her that they grow on the side of a volcano. You won't be lying. Prices start at 40 bucks. No upcharges, no extra fees. Free delivery when you register. Save 20% at books.com with promo code Bill. B-O-U-Q-S.com. Thanks to HBO for giving us After the Thrones and Any Given Wednesday, my new show, June 22nd, Wednesday night, HBO. Uh, Thanks to The Ringer. Subscribe to The Ringer's newsletter at www.theringer.com. You can also check us out on facebook.com slash ringer for a little extra content on After the Thrones and the NBA playoffs. And then finally, our Channel 33 podcast feed has a bunch of good stuff this week, including... uh, multiple nfl draft podcasts if you want to get ready for that channel 33 it is kicking butt i think we're in the top 20 in itunes yesterday which i was psyched about because we launched that thing a couple months ago and some great content to come enjoy the week anytime y'all want to see me again 